So now we're in the car, uh, but let's make sure to reassemble the key and key fob. We don't want to lose track of the pieces. And if you uh, removed a keyhole cover, put it in your pocket, put it in your purse, your glove box, anywhere you'll remember. There's no point replacing it yet. Until there is a new battery in the fob, the exposed keyhole is your only option for locking and unlocking the car. So, let's get the car started. Our puppy is anxious. Now, this is a Lexus, and is with most cars from the Far East, and Jeeps for some reason, the procedure is simple and standardized. Touch the key fob to the start-stop button, step on the brake, and push the button. You'll likely hear a chime of recognition and see a light inside or around the start-stop button. You can push it with the fob itself, as I did here. Okay, we'll get on with it. Not that these guys care. Most, but not all, remaining push-button start cars provide a backup slot that you can slip the key fob into. The car then recognizes the key. It might be in the dash, and if it is, will be near the start-stop button. It might be in the glove box. It might be in the center console, or worse, under the cup holders. There are too many possibilities to cover here, particularly if you own a GM or Ford Motor product or Hyundai and Kia car built before 2013. Once you find it, insert the key, step on the brake, and press the start-stop button as normal. To their credit, Hyundai and Kia have moved to the procedure we just demonstrated, but Ford and GM really must standardize the process to something, but show no signs of doing so. Consult our app or our pages that we can update more quickly, or your manual for the exact backup slot location or start procedure. But always keep in mind that if the car's main battery is good, there is a way to start the car with a key fob that has gone dead. Okay, nap time. We'll put together more videos as cars come available.